All of this stuff shaded in red floods. Joining me now is NBC News technology correspondent Jacob Ward. Jacob, first of all, we hear so much from politicians from, from people who doubt climate change. Well, it's cold where I am, or even claiming right. that we've got the coldest years on record globally, which actually isn't true. But of the 10 hottest on record, only two of them fall outside of the last te uh, 10 years. So tell me right. why these opposite ideas, these anti-science ideas persist. Well, I think it's, it's exactly what you were pointing out about President Trump. You know, it, it's basically that our, our human sensor array is built mostly to just relate to other people in small groups sitting around a campfire. You know, we, we are not built as humans to grok huge abstract systemic changes. We're good at snakes and fire and the things that are right in front of us. And so we just don't have the apparatus to, to imagine the kind of scale of change. You see this in technology, you see this now in climate change. We just don't believe it unless it's happening in front of our eyes. And it turns out our eyes cannot help us with this problem. Um, which, which is why some people relate to weather more than they relate to climate, right? Because weather That's is right. something I have to react to. I have to put on the right coat, and if I don't, I'll find out. That's right. I'm experiencing this right now. How could it possibly be that the, the planet is getting warmer? And that's because, you know, the kinds of changes we're talking about happen over multiple lifetimes and can sweep all of us up in some huge systemic change that your eyes wouldn't necessarily show to you on a moment by moment basis. So, yeah, it's just one of these great challenges of human perception that that even globe is warming over the course of hundreds of years, we, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, get tricked by our human senses into believing that the only thing we should believe is the thing that's right in front of us. So help me out. Uh, Jake, you study this all the time. You know about this. Right. Maybe people are just intimidated to come up to you and say things like, um, you know, I don't think climate change is, is human-driven or that humans contribute to right. it. What is a, a guy like me who's not a scientist, what's the best answer to give people who continue to doubt uh, whether climate change is actually a thing? You know, I, I would say two things. You know, first, if you're the kind of person who wants to go head on at the argument, then go head on at the argument. I mean, you know, I wish that, that we could sort of, you know, hand out little placards or maybe get tattooed on our arms that, that 1950 line that you had there right. in that graphic, right? That, that when the Industrial Revolution hit, the, the trend started upward and then it just became a hockey stick and now it's a runaway thing. But if you don't feel like fighting, why don't you go the other way and just say, what is wrong with creating a more efficient, more environmentally sensitive world? We are only going to get better and better at making things if we learn how to make them in an ecologically and environmentally responsible way. It used to be that that was the sort of, you know, uh, window dressing you would put on at the end of a design project. But these days, any good architect, any good product designer is trying to make something that's environmentally sensitive. And so in my mind, I just think to, you, so, to myself, don't worry about it if you if you're if you just don't believe it existentially fine you know I'm, i won't fight with you but let's just get better at making these things in an environmentally mm -hmm. sensitive way because it means that we're getting better at what we do right and by the way uh, folks who the, the, when i showed that chart of uh, water levels rising the military right. the coast guard the navy they all actually understand this they are trying to build and mitigate those things so to the degree yes. that people around the world who have to do things about this are doing things and in the united states government agencies are dealing with it uh, f f uh State governments are dealing with it. Municipalities right. are dealing with it. Does it matter? Or let me how much does it matter that the United States pulls out of the Paris Climate Accord? Oh, it's huge, right? I mean, it's huge. We are one of the great emitters of carbon in the world. We and China are the two. And you could argue that we are, in fact, bound up with China's emissions because so much of our manufacturing takes place in China. So that's kind of our emissions, too. I mean, the United States, what you know, as we go, so goes the planet in many ways. So we really have to go with it. And for me, I, I just think that, you know, even though you hear at the top of the administration this sort of, you know, weird kind of, uh, uh, you know, vague dismissals of climate change, in the, the the center of, mm. uh, of of the government, places like you know the the rescue teams that are right now trying to plan for the northern crossing, which they're planning to open up, right? Where suddenly all the countries, uh, Sweden, Norway, Russia, the United States, Canada, that are going to share that northern border, they're going to start sending trips uh, ships across the northern uh, uh, portion of the globe because it'll be the fastest way to ship things. Right. And they're already starting to figure out, okay, can our helicopters rescue people in the middle of that? I mean, these are really practical 
practical people. And when you begin to hear military and rescue planners yep. planning for this kind of change, you know it's real. Those are not people who take a flyer on theoretical things. Jacob, I'm glad we've got you to help us explain these things. Jacob Ward is our NBC News uh, science and technology correspondent. All right, it was Thanks, what a